Yeah, hi, my name is Konrad Weimann. I'm currently working for Affinet Embedded on something called Simple Switch slash Simple Core. So if you might want to dig up on it on Google, please feel free. But my talk today will be about something very different, but something I guess we all faced at one point when you are working with Yocto. So let me get started. So the motivation for this talk. It's pretty clear and simple. Um, we have our very own project layer, like jo Josef likely introduced in before, and it contains a lot of stuff we don't want. Uh, potentially lots of errors and stuff like this. And we have our CI system and we want to be informed about stuff when it breaks before it actually enters the device or hits any kind of deployment chain or whatsoever. And in addition to that, uh, we want to catch information where it matters. So that means where the change was actually introduced, we want to have information. And third point would be, we only want to catch uh, the things we actually can fix. So for instance, when you think about uh, putting Pokey into the mix, that should be not part of this lesson today, because I think that's basically too much uh, information you can handle roundabout, I would say, from the various linters I will introduce to you later on, you can expect round about 10 to 15,000 findings. So let's boil it down to the stuff that really matters. So the agenda for today. First of all, we're going to do some very live coding together. So if any one of you has their um, Digital Ocean VM up and running, that would be quite convenient. Um, then we're going to do our very first build of what I have prepared. We do some error detection, we do some uh, suppression of stuff that we don't need, and we're going to have a deeper look into CI integration. And then there is a chapter going beyond, which I will not spoil the beans on right now. So let's get started. First of all, let me switch. I hope you can see my download right now. Um, <clears throat> if you guys are locked into your VM, just go to YP Summit and so on and Pokey, and you will find a layer called meter-ys2311-sca. So let's have a look into that, what's in there. Can you please stuff. increase the font size? Uh, let me quickly see if I can do that. Yeah. Uh, b -b -b preferences. Mm, where is it? Oh, yeah. It's. Uh, let's take that one. Is that better? So let's, I, I hope it's better. It's like an increase of almost 100%. It's very um, good, thank you. Yes, cool. Very good. Um, for instance, we have here a YS2311 demo service, which contains some system D service, which calls apparently a shell script. Then what else do we have here? I'm going to skip on that one. That's part of the deal later. Oh. Use less here. So there is another one. Or oh, let's use something more specific here. Uh, it's called recipes by project. That looks better. So that's basically our layer here. So we have a third party package. That's what I wanted to show, which is just some tarball coming from some supplier, for instance. And we have a demo service, and then apart from that, there's an image which just binds it all together. So pretty simple and straightforward. So the next slide, let me get back to this one here. Now it's time to choose our weapon. So the initial deal is here uh, <clears throat> that we want to use some tools to identify all the nifty little errors that are introduced by either the code itself or by the recipes, which basically prevents the image from booting up properly. That's the lesson for today. And 
First of all, we need to be aware of what we have. So as I already said, we have a custom system B service. We have some shell scripts. We have a third party blob. In the end, everything should boot up nicely. So let's choose our weapons, the build setup. Uh, for today's lesson in your VM, you already find the release, latest release version of Pokey, uh, the latest release of meter-sca and our custom layer installed. So there's nothing to be done on your end. So we can skip this slide, but if you uh, want to repeat this lesson at home, for instance, just feel free. Everything is in the slides that you will find on uh, the presentation platform. So, uh, let me go back one slide. Exactly. What I wanted to show right now is a configure script. So if we, for instance, now go to meter SCA scripts, configure, and point it to the meter SCA repository tree, then you will be asked some questions. I will just uh, briefly go through it. You don't need to do it. Everything is already pre-installed in your VM today. So, but there are a bunch of questions you can choose for every kind of language, some tool, which uh, hopefully will make it easier for you. I will just go, go briefly through it here. And so what do we want? Okay, zero, zero, zero. Yes, yes. Arrows. Yes, all this, and there's a lot of to, to be configured, but in the end you will get such an extract that you could put in your local conf, or as Joseph already explained to you, it's better to have this uh, kind of stuff in your distro config. So, but as I said, everything is already prepared, so we can also skip this track. Uh, step here and just get going. Let's do something interactive here. So first of all, of course, we need to uh, source the environment and the build folder is called build-qa. Need to append that at the end. And then you can do bitbag ys2311 demo image. And apparently everything is already done because I spent significant time last week to ma make that all happen for you. Otherwise we would have waited now for around about two hours for something very small. So what is done in the background? Uh, as you could see, for instance, in your temp folder, temp deploy images, your architecture, could see a subfolder called SCA. And there you have the results from all the linting tools that were applied to all the various images. Let's take a look into some of them, just to get you an idea what can be done and what not. So for each tool, there's, all, uh, tool, there's also three subfolders. One is called Raw. Let's look at this. And there you can see the recipe names. So. Let's have a look, for instance, at the demo service that I talked about earlier. Images. If I'm too quick, just chart in. Then, then I'll wait a second. Um, SCA, check which is on raw 2311 demo service. And here you can see, for instance, from the tool check fishism, which we integrated into uh, as a linter into our build, the following finding was reported. Apparently, in one of the files, there is something wrong. So we in a POSIX shell, we're using something which is uh, exclusively to bash. So these findings are then magically transposed to something 
and here we are not using cat but jq into a JSON representation with even more information. So we see here at this particular point that uh, this one, uh, finding was reported at this line, the following recipes and include files were included. And this is the actually offending file here. And then further for all, is another representation of the very same just in a different format. Ah. Now we have to use XML lint format demo service and here you can find the very same information again. So this might all sound very complicated to you but it's just some background information stored in various formats we gonna need later. But for now there's something very convenient if we want to just see all the findings that were reported throughout the build. So, meter SCA. Then uh, there's again a script called results to console and we're just going to give it the deploy folder. Images, UMO, SCA. And here you can see all the findings that were reported from either one of the recipes that was pulled in throughout the build, all from the image itself. So if we are now grabbing, for instance, for our demo service, so YS23 demo service, you can see all the findings that were found in this particular source code or recipe information. And there's a bunch of stuff. Let's have a look into that. For instance, what do we have here? Let's have a look first at this, this POSIX thingy here and then get maybe on with invalid settings. Invalid settings in a, a systemd file would prevent the boot. So let's have a look into that. So, uh, by the way, I'm going to use Nano today, but if you're more like a VM type, a VI type, please feel free to use VI. It uh, doesn't matter much for this class, I think. So, it's uh, meter YS2311 SCA recipes, my project, uh, demo service files, and then there's this demo service SH. Let's have a look into that. So, and yeah. This is a classic POSIX shell that we have here, but it's using this best reach. So let's change it for cut. And also let's have a look at the service. And yeah, some unknown option. I guess that's not something system D will report, support easily. So let's remove that here. Now we can Build again and see if these reported items disappear. I'm just, for the sake of it, going to rebuild the demo service and not the image. That's just much quicker. Then we are using the very same script again and see if they disappear. Okay, the invalid setting is still there and this one is also still there. But I can tell you in the original file, oh, where is it? Temp deploy images QMO um, SCA. What do we have here? Sh Shell check. Oh no, let's use system dlint and ys23 ah, raw. Raw ys2311 demo service. That's because this particular finding was also reported from the image itself, which we didn't rebuild. So if we are now going to do for instance, bitbag 
demo image and just clean the estate cache so it, everything is nice and clean, these findings should disappear. So what we, basically what happened in the background is the build system just rebuilt this recipe but didn't update the image itself. So if you would update the image itself, the findings would also likely disappear. So let's try that out and see. So the, the shell check warning is gone and one of the system DLint warnings is also gone. So that's very much fine. I think we can now almost boot our system. So what else do we have? Ah, yeah. Let's have a look into this lovely third party package. Just because suppliers never can be trusted. I think most of the people on this call can agree to that. Okay. There's some interesting things going on. There's a warning in Bitbake, which we didn't see in before. So, and there are interesting findings. So, Apparently, there's a shell uh, script installed, which is not executable, and it's installed in some place that's pretty off standard. So let's have a look into the recipe itself first, just to get uh, an idea what this bitbake warning is about. Um, third party package and then there should be a third party package.bb. Yeah, that's right. Apparently the build system warned that we need a subscription key uh, through the environment, which we didn't offer. Uh, what this, how this could be fixed? I mean, then you need to have a talk with your supplier. So we just leave it as of now. But the other thing is much more interesting. So it's, let's use tar, tfv, and then recipes my project, third party package, files, third party package, and then let's look at the table. And as you can see, this shell script is apparently not installed as executable, and it's installed in uh, the root as random deer. I'm not quite sure if you want that, but let's just at least fix the part where it's uh, <clears throat> not executable as a script. So let's go in here. And just let's add. Uh, random there slash third party dot sh and let's try again to rebuild see if we can get rid of this finding here for instance oh uh, no it was third party package it was not the demo service Okay, this time we actually see the warning about the missing subscription key and we run into another thing. So, as we now have it executable, Bitbag actually catches up and uh, tells us, okay, there's something wrong. So, the shell script apparently called something called bin custom shell as an interpreter. I don't think that this is going to work out. Let's fix that as well. So... Let's use that for that and just replace bin custom shell by standard POSIX shell. Um, once again, if you have any questions, if I'm too fast or something, just shout into the call. I'm currently having a hard time also watching the, the Zoom monitor, oh, just two monitors. Yeah. yeah, can you just hold the screen up for a second? Come again? Yeah, just hold the screen up for a second after you're done typing. Of course. Oh, sorry, that was a bit quick.
Everybody ready? I guess so. So let's try it once more and see if we can build finally this package and have a way more better feeling uh, this actually being bootable. So let's use once again from the history this lovely results to console script and missing provider. Okay, random magic, we're going to ignore that. The warning is still here, but apparently it's now executable and it's installable as such. So that's kind of good. Um, I think now the image would be worth to be booted on a machine, for instance, or SQMO. But I think the, the overall process is very tedious. So how to get rid of this tedious console command line thingy, I will show you later. But first of all, a more interesting question would be how to error out automatically. So some of the errors that you might encounter along the way, there are, I mean, you are pretty sure there shouldn't happen. So let's terminate the build here. What we need for that is we need to edit our local conf in the Q and build folder. But you can, um, by the way, you can find the very same slides on the, the platform as a PDF if we just want to copy uh, stuff here. <clears throat> but let's do that interactively. So nano conf local conf. Let's go at the bottom. There's already such a line. But in this case, we are going to add one more ID. Fatal. And this time we choose, by the way, the uh, IDs are case sensitive. So it's a capital S and a capital C in shell check both times. SC3034. And if you're done, just save that one. And we are going to need, uh, need to revert change that we previously made in the demo service SH. So recipes, my project, demo service, files, demo service SH. Because the, the shell check tool reports exactly this finding here as the ID SC3034. And once done, we can now just try to do build our demo service once more. And as you can see, now the build itself is terminated automatically. So let's check just the return code here. It's one. So in CI, this thing would fail instantly just because you, cause, because you configured this particular ID to be uh, reasonable enough to not get going any further. So we can do the same thing also in the other way. We can if we consider this particular ID not of interest, we can also ignore that one. So once again, we're going to need to add a local config at the bottom and just replace this fatal at the end with suppress. And once done, let's try another build and see if that fails and if the item is still reported. 
as we are editing local, local config, it takes usually some time to do the parsing. And there are certainly better ways than just to fiddle around with local config. In this case, I would recommend to have a look at the documentation of Meter SCA, which is quite large and covers hopefully most of the bases here. So, finally our build is ready. Okay, it's reported two warnings, which basically means it didn't. Under task again, let's do a clean estate here and enforce that all the necessary tasks are run again. This looks now much better. So let's have a look at the results. Again, from the history, grab for this results to console script and then just look for YS2311 demo service. And see if ID of Shellshake 3034 is appearing here somewhere. No, it doesn't. But still the other tool, Shellshake uh, Bashism, is reporting the very same. So just in case you might want to consider suppressing that as well. Another op uh, possibility here is if you're just wanting to ignore a single setting and not like a finding in general, then there's also a way. And let's go back to this one here. And now it's getting a bit more difficult. Let me quickly show you the slides to that. So, exactly. Now the variable is called SCA underline suppress underline locals. So, underline suppress, underline locals. And the syntax of it is, first of all, it's the file itself. So in our case, demo service.sh, then the finding, then the line where it appears, and then we just use an asterisk at the end. So let's use that here. Demo service. in line 7 and then just an asterisk and just to show you that is really it's just going to press one of the findings here and not like another one let's just Added the very same mistake at a different line once more. Save it. Clean the estate, build once more, and then I will show you the results and they should open up plenty of possibilities to get like a clear baseline in your project if you're using this kind of setup here.
Okay, we finally made it. Let's put up another build of this particular recipe. Where is it? Here. YS2311 demo service. And let's again use this results script here and see if it's still complaining about it. So, as you can see, demo service.sh in line 7 is not reported anymore by Shellcheck, but now in line 11. So, you can even suppress one single findings or just a bunch of, of, of files or whatever you like. It's very flexible in that way. Now that we suppressed stuff uh, and just exclusively worked on the console here, let's try to make that more convenient in everyday life. So it's time for CI integration. By default, the uh, SCA layer currently supports uh, direct integration with Jenkins, uh, a not so straightforward integration with GitLab, uh, and also not so straightforward uh, integration with SonarCube and uh, some currently experimental options to work with GitHub and uh, GitLab pull requests. But let's dig into J uh, Jenkins for now. Uh, what I did uh, and prepared in this lesson already is a Docker image or is a script that uses the standard Jenkins Docker image you can run on your device. So let's get to the particular folder where you need to be. So it's meter is 23 and then it's demos Jenkins. And in here you just find a, a creep made Jenkins home which just holds all the configuration for Jenkins and this run script which is basically just some Docker operation. Let's use that. So it's run as H. And it wants to deploy here. So the deploy here is the uh, folder where the images for your particular architecture are stored. So let's find that here somewhere. It was built SQA and deploy images QML. So now it's pulling a lot of layers and extracting stuff. Uh, hopefully that works out for you as well so far. So oh, what is that? Ah, yeah, I know. I know what the problem is. I did some late minute fixes. So first of all, we need to do a git pull. So not okay. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Post there always. Expecting an absolute fa uh, path. So, now the Jenkins is starting up here on this VM, and it should be reachable by the internet. So, let's switch to that one. So... I mean, you can use the uh, one from your VM if you have started up this Docker image, or you can use mine. It's abc df 3 summityoctoio port 8080. And if you start it up, you see the classic Jenkins experience here. And the login for this instance is test test. That should be the same for everyone. We are just logging in right now. You see I already prepared a couple of days ago a test project which contains a very basic pipeline to integrate all these findings for, that we had out of the Yocto build in something Jenkins can understand. Will you be keeping this Jenkins service open a couple of days for people to try it? I mean, you, you can just clone the layer and uh, try it yourself on your local ah. machine. Okay. So, that would be the preferred way, just because Jenkins is so messy with the disk space and stuff like this. So, 
the pipeline itself is just copying over the, the stuff that we had in the Stocker volume mount into the workspace. So Jenkins can understand it, uh, exchange a few paths here and there, and then just record issues. That's the plugin the, that Jenkins uh, favors for this kind of thing. So if we go back and just click on build now, it pulls in the very latest of our results. By the way, why there are two builds triggered at the very same time is something I will never understand about Jenkins, but that's maybe just me. So here you can see like 5,000 warnings have, to, have been found in this one. And you also have a history and something nice. And let's look for instance at, oh, Seems like a lot of people are accessing this instance right now. It's working a bit slowly. Uh, let's look, for instance, at Shellcheck, the one that we just edited in before. And here we have our demo service. And here in line 11, there is still this thing that should not be as... Oh, it just cut it off something. Okay, interesting. So, and may, uh, you can also filter by stuff. And it's very convenient to have a, a high level overview about things. So, what else do we have here? Oh, for instance, one of our demo service is using a wrong file mask. That's an interesting thing to have. Uh, that was the wrong click. And that's basically what Jenkins can deliver uh, for you. You can also configure within this instance that you are automatically terminating the build after the current, uh, a certain threshold of new items appear in the build and stuff like this. Just consult the Jenkins documentation for that. It's pretty convenient if you're still using Jenkins for your CI service. If you don't, then there's something which I will not show today because I haven't prepared any pull requests on GitHub or GitLab. Uh, it's called SCA bot. Just consult the uh, documentation of S uh, Meta SCA. Uh, it basically is uh, some automation which interacts with the pull requests and just comments on the lines that were changed as part of this pull request, which is quite convenient if you're working with either of these platforms. So, now that we covered almost all the bases, uh, what about, for instance, if you think about C projects? We haven't uh, seen any C code so far. For my personal opinion, it only makes sense to tackle like C code where C code is actually changed. So in an upstream project and how to do that with the means of meter SCA, let me show you today. So what we, are go uh, what we need for that is uh, an SDK. Meter SCA um, has some magic uh, in it that turns all these tools or the scripts that run these tools into something that you can also use from your SDK. So currently everything is uh, made as BB classes, but the SDK turns them into shell scripts, including hard-coded settings for all of your fatal and uh, suppression settings that you made earlier. So as part of the demo repository, you find also uh, a new template that you need to apply uh, ways how to populate the SDK. We're going to skip that today because it's quite heavy. But what you uh, once you have this SDK, what you can do is actually uh, deflate it into a Docker image. And that's what we are going to do today. So I already prepared an image. So let's use that one. It's called uh, SCA-Container. Let's get back to the console. And Let's cancel Jenkins for now. Okay, Jenkins is dead. That's pretty good. 
and let's go into a classic C demo project that's just one folder above. Let's have a look at here. It's simple hello world. It's something very short in terms of C code. So let's use Docker pull with kw dash sca container latest. Once again, it's quite a heavy Docker container, but I think if you serve it just from internal infrastructure, it, should be, it shouldn't matter much. Anyway, in this container, you can find all the tools that we currently have seen. So like this shell check tool or this check decision, and also in addition, a new tool called a CPP check, which is just a, my recommended open source linter when it comes to C code. Okay, hopefully this is done in a second. And now we can, uh, for instance, run, Docker run interactive. Let's mount TWD. To home. Let me quickly see. It was home user slash source. Home user slash source. And then we are just telling the Docker command line which container to use. latest. Oh yeah, we are already in Docker here. And if you, for instance, now do a print environment, you can see like the classic variables that you would expect when you're a part of a sourced SDK environment. For instance, here this OE core target, for instance. So it means basically we are now in a Docker, or well, just to show you the difference. This is from the outside world. And now we are in the Docker environment with a sourced SDK. And this SDK, uh, which is made from the build I previously shown you with the, with the configuration, there are new uh, shell scripts in it. One is called sca-runall. And then there are for all the tools, there are particular shell scripts here, which do just needed uh, operations. For instance, let's have a look at um, bup, bup, bup. so you can get an idea what it actually does. Run do sca underline shell check for And it's a Python script and it's quite lengthy. But at the end, somewhere we should find that it's actually calling. Oh, here, it's calling a shell check wrapper. So that's the actual argument which is run, and then we are doing some magic around it to extract all the information. But let's use this uh, wrapper script around every tool, which is called SCA run all. Let's run that. Interestingly, it didn't found anything. Okay, that's, that's surprising. Uh, on the second attempt, it actually finds something. And here it reports on line 21 and 24 in out of bound access um, from this tool. Let's have a look. Yeah, and that's right, minus one at a, with an array access that doesn't sound right. Let's quickly fix that. Yeah, here's another thing. I can't save in this Docker image. I haven't figured out why. 
but that sh shouldn't be part of the exercises just to show you that it's still possible uh let me get to another project which is called mixed demo project which in the end contains also a ch the, our well-known demo service at sh go on here and see if really all tools are run here Here we see again our shell check issues and, so on, and one of the new features. So if you have configured this fatal error, for instance, SC1073, it's going to error out here. So you can use that to automatically set up your SDK in terms of, of the linter baseline. Let me show you where you, the, the one was configured. So it's build QA. Conf, local conf. If we just scroll down to the very bottom, you can see here, shell check SC1073 was considered for us a fatal error. So it was actually hard coded into the necessary scripts in the SDK. And now as part of the SDK, we are just running this to and error out automatically, which is quite convenient, but it's not enough. We can have it even more convenient. If you, for instance, are familiar with the tool called pre-commit, which is basically something which hooks up on the git com uh, uh, commit hook features and runs a tool once somebody tries to commit a change. Also, that is possible here. Let's go one folder out and go into mix project dash pre commit. And here you can see another a new file called dot pre commit config. And it basically just says, okay, at this stage uh, for our hooks, we just want to run a certain Docker image and then check the result of it. So let's do that. First of all, let's pull the new Docker image. It's called proof. And then it's SCA container. latest I'm pretty sure if you're familiar enough with docker you can combine like the standard SDK image and this pre uh, commit integration here because they only differ in uh, their entry point script but I think my personal docker food doesn't <laughs> It's simply not enough. Let's put it like this. So, okay. And now we are not in the Docker image. We can just run pre commit run dash a, dash a, dash a and it's actually launching the Docker image in the background and performing all the tests on our current workspace. I hope this time it works. The, yesterday evening I tried it and somehow the VM stalled. I have no idea why. It never happened to me on the local workspace. So let's see. Hopefully it does the trick today. Otherwise I just show you the, the uh, extract that I have captured from the previous run in the slides. But apparently does not because it should have been finished by now already. Cancel this session here and let me just show you what you can expect. For instance, it would look like this. It's just simply failed and then you get the information that you can see from this SCA run all script directly outside of the Docker in your console before you can commit any nonsense to a Git repository. And yeah, that's our very quick go through for uh, Linter introduction uh, in the Yocto build. 
Uh, if you liked what you've seen, uh, I'm always happy to get some help with maintaining some branches, with people having a look closer at this SCA bot, where people that have a huge GitLab instance or some testing lab Git instance. Uh, documentation PRs are always very welcome. And of course, if you have a new tool in mind, uh, let me see it. That basically concludes my talk, and now I'm happy to answer all your questions that you might have. <laughs>